Guys, welcome back to a new hot boy episode of Maddie Chipper Podcast. Why did I say that? I'm not a hype beast. Anyways, you guys are in for a treat. This is the first time I'm recording this little spiel afterwards. And I got to be honest, this is one of my favorite episodes. I just dug in a shit. Things came out of my mouth, my butthole, I queefed. It was just a good episode and I'm excited for you guys. If you're new, welcome. This is a uh, fun time of topics that are just real deep to me uh and i think you'll enjoy it uh and i more importantly fuck me matt god damn it guys if you like this hit the subscribe button this is that what just happened is like essentially what you're gonna listen to for 35 minutes but it's more choreographed and uh, enjoyable but if you like this hit the subscribe button i'd appreciate it and um if you guys are returning thank you you guys are the best people on earth clicking that button clicking the buttons makes me very happy that you guys support my psychotic bullshit and i keep doing this each week for you guys and new people if you're listening you can become one of them if you just keep coming back so that being said if you guys are returning new ugly hot whatever uh hit the like button it means the world the algorithm gets its little butthole tickled they throw me a couple views i think that's a lie for all i know they just want people uh to interact with things but regardless hit the like button comment below uh and with all that being said enjoy this new episode of the maddie chimber podcast Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Maddie Chimber Podcast. As I said that, I watched a piece of spit fly out of my mouth. I wonder if that got picked up on the camera. If it did, that'd be pretty exciting. And I want you guys to know that I'm a human being and I spit when I talk. That's like the worst thing when it happens. And two people have to watch that happen and nobody acknowledges it. What happened to people just saying, hey, classic elementary school insult. Hey, potty mouth. That's the worst though when something like that happens or something stops you mid-conversation where like there's a bodily issue involved and you're just like, you kind of just ruin the conversation, which you're looking out for me, kind of, while we're digging into it right away. Let's rank things that can stop a conversation that's from acceptable to, I wish you didn't say anything. I feel like, you know, I wish you didn't say anything, maybe spit. Don't tell me I have, I just spit. Let's just keep the conversation going because now we have to stop the conversation and then have to pick it up again because you wanted to acknowledge me spitting on your face. You selfish piece of shit. That's actually somewhat understandable, but for the sake of the argument, I think you shouldn't say anything. And I really only have maybe two others. <laughs> Note another one that sucks is when you're talking and somebody goes, you got a little... And then you have like a fucking snot just like chilling on your goddamn nose. And you're like, now, why did you stop the conversation? Just ride it out. You're the one that you could just ignore it. Don't acknowledge it. It, It's like a weird thing because you're like, thank you. Maybe after, before I walk away, be like, hey, by the way. Because even that's weird. Hey, by the way, conversation's done. You've had a booger on your nose the whole time. And then I'd be like, why don't you just tell me up top? What would you guys do? Would you tell them right away? mid convo meaning you panicked and you didn't want to make that decision right away or at the end i think the end might be the best one it's just like hey didn't want i want to be like this hey hey hey. i grabbed their arm like it's a romantic comedy or a romantic movie in general sorry i sneezed before that's why i'm all contagious um i sneeze and then shit gets fucked up it's settling we'll be good um i'd grab their arm and be like hey just so you know I'm such a good conversation haver that you had a booger on your nose the whole time that I was ignoring. And then uh, I didn't tell you because I wanted you to feel comfortable talking to me. But now that we're cool, I want you to know you have a fat snot on your fucking nose. And you might want to take care of that, you fucking ugly piece of shit. And then they go, cool, cool, you have a booger on your nose. And then they walk away, meaning they weren't going to tell you about yours. What is this, Inception, bro? (laughs) What are we Inceptioning within two seconds of this podcast starting? It's weird. That's a weird thing to think about how 
when you look out for someone, it can in turn make you angry at them. I and mean, I think I've talked about this before on here. I've talked about it before and, uh, you know, that's who we are as people. We're just some weird pieces of shit who uh, get mad for no reason. I was thinking about that the other day where we just – loud cars. Like, hey, dudes on motorcycle. Hey, dudes on Harleys with your radio playing. Turn your fucking radio down. Like, turn – like – can you be on a piece of equipment that doesn't need a radio more than a fucking, like, a loud-ass motorcycle? There's a reason why, like, chainsaws don't have radios on them. <laughs> That's like a fucking chainsaw with a radio on it. Dude, if you have to blast it that loud, no one wants to hear your, like, theme you look like a theme for just a midlife crisis like dude on harley not even the cool harley it's the one that looks like somebody saw a, sawed a car in half those like weird like cruisers <clears throat> hey guy on cruiser blasting fucking uh van halen r.i.p but van halen jump go ahead and jump jump just so fucking loud with his helmet on. You're like, you have 90 things telling you why you shouldn't be playing um, music right now, and you're still doing it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to put a, a, ra a radio on my lawnmower, and then I'm going to blast it so loud that I can't really hear it, but people within the surrounding neighborhoods can know that I'm mowing my lawn and probably doing crooked lines. Oh, you mow your lawn? I can tell your lines are crooked as fuck. If anybody lives in suburbs, you know that's a good diss amongst dudes. Yeah, Steve's got some fucking crooked ass lines. That guy's a, guy's a bitch. You know, fuck his wife. Steve's lines, crooked. He misses spots. I love how you could just insult a dude via... I kind of like that idea. You can insult a dude via his, his uh, yard. Hey, fucking dry erase marker. Jesus Christ almighty. Lawn, lawn roast. This might be, uh, this might find its way on the IG. <clears throat> I actually had another idea for, I'm writing that down. Uh, I'm writing that down because I had another idea about old dudes. I'll just tell you, I don't give a fuck. Uh, and I don't know, I think it's a little too niche right now, but basically, um, I'm sure a lot of you, whether you have boyfriends and you guys have a house together, husbands or you have dads or somebody or coworkers, old dudes got that app where they have like the, um, it's like the bell, the door, the ring app, but for your whole house, like basically old dudes, what I'm saying is they love looking at their yard when they're there and doing it and then they leave and then they just watch it through the app on their phone. You're just watching like security footage of your fucking backyard. <laughs> You're like, it's going to be there when you get back. Nothing's happening. Hey, look at this. Look at this. I can see my pool right now. You're like, I don't care about your fucking pool that you don't clean. Check this out. Somebody rings the doorbell. I can see who it is and talk to him. Yeah, you can leave the package right there. That guy's like, I was going to leave it here to begin with. Yeah, okay, move it to the left out now I think about it. You're just doing that because you have the ability to talk to me while you should be doing your job, Richard. Um, old dudes and fucking lawnmowers. <clears throat> What's another idea? My brain's just cranking right now. <laughs> Motorcycle. Let's write things down. Motorcycle. I like to write things on my mirror so when people come over, I'm, I'm productive. Everything's an idea. Um, motorcycle, loud. What I say? Chainsaw. Guys, this is not my writing process. I look very like... This is every teach, every science teacher. Anyone? Anyone? Amoebas? Anyone? All right. Uh, chainsaw radio. I'm going to forget what this is. And some girl's going to come over like, why'd you write penis saw? And I'm like... <laughs> An idea that I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> fucking old dudes. Yeah, I can see the side of my house right now. It's pretty crazy. See that shit? That's where I'm gonna 
that's where I'm going to edge. I'm going to use my edger and go around that <coughs> sidewalk, get those weeds out when I get home. Cool. I uh, think your motorcycle's still running. <laughs> Jump, jump. I don't know. I like to shit on things and then they <clears throat> and then they warm up to me. So like I've always shit on like dudes wearing Jordans and then I like see the more I shit on them, the more I look at them to find roasts and then I see a pair that I'm like, I kinda would wear those. I won't do it. I wear like fucking dumpy. Let me show you what I wear. That was a hit song. Dude, these are my shoes that I wear a lot. These are classic New England boat shoes. They're like, you don't want them to look nice. Like, I'm still in the fucking... Keep it down! Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna get fucking yelled at. Um, just kidding. That was part of the show. Um... I come from like, this is like my style. Like, you're not going to look at me and be like, oh, shit, he's crisp. That's all these dudes. Every dude once looks like crisp. I grew up Abercrombie, Hollister, ripped, but with style. That's me, baby. Ripped, but with st- <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't want to look like too matchy. I don't want to be... I like to blend in. <clears throat> my clothes don't make me stand out. They make me go away. You're if you're you're there's two different people in this fucking world. The two people that wear clothes to stand out, just people wearing reflector outfits. And then I want to get back to that idea. Um, people wearing reflector outfits, which are Jordan wearers. Rude. That's not even gonna be funny. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? There's some people I just want to be like, I see you. We see what you're doing, but you don't need to do that. Just fucking like the most obvious fucking bl- like loud clothing. And then you got fucking shit dick me. Did I throw my shoe? Oh. Like you don't see, like if I just wore this. If that was the accent piece of my outfit, you'd be able to tell. But, like, dude, if you just saw my jeans, I just look like a fucking dad who just ran out to get something. That's my vibe. That's my whole aesthetic. Stepdad who ran out to get milk even though they don't need it because he just wanted to get out of the house. That's my look. I'm going to get some milk. We have, like, half a gallon. You guys in the cereal? Really? It's the weekend. They don't eat cereal on the weekend. I'm going to just get some fucking milk, okay? I got to get out of this fucking house. Shout out to stepdads for just moving into other people's houses. You're like, I'm going to move in with you, but you're telling me you have roommates that are going to hate me? All right, that sounds kind of weird. I'm that style. I'm guy living in somebody else's house. Kids don't like him. Wife gives him shit. He leaves to do... Unnecessary errands vibe. That's me. I don't know. What do you people wear? Wear whatever you fucking want. I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. I'm such a... I have these like... I'm a very opinion-based boy. I'm an opinion-based boy. That's what I said in in an interview once. Tell us about yourself. I'm an opinion-based boy. They're like, you're not getting the job. Okay. Um, I don't have opinion. That wasn't funny. Um, I don't give a fuck what people do. Even, like, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, like, with, like, current event shit. Like, you ever stop and, like, you see everybody arguing about stuff and you're like, should I be, should I care more about what's happening in the world right now? Because there, I cannot have z- more little opinion. Like, I have zero care towards half the shit people complain about. And if anything, I... I want to complain about the people complaining about the shit I don't know anything about. Does that make sense? 
I'm just a fucking mannequin that like picks up on little things like boogers get stuck on your nose. While people are like, the politics of the Republican and Democrat. You're like, why is your thing you're like passionate about so much more important than mine? I'm just this like weary person who just like. It's like when you're watching like some fucking lecture on some important shit. I'm the guy who leans over and goes, there's a fly in his head. <laughs> that's me. I don't, I'm not listening to anything that's happening. Maybe not fly in the head because I know that just happened. There's a fly in his drink. Why do I say fly again? You, okay, you get what I'm saying. That's me. I'm the friend who just leans over and tell you something that has nothing to do with the, what's going on, but it also does. I'm looking beyond the fucking bullshit they're fucking shoving in our face. And you know what? I prefer that. Maybe I should care more. I see people like who are just... We all have those friends who are just so caught up in current event stuff to the point where you're like, How, where is this source you're pulling? Like, are you just on Twitter all day? Are you just like literally refreshing the news? Like, how do you guys find so much shit like my YouTube, my internet, like, uh, my internet, like time, whatever you want to call it is literally just spent. I watch cooking shows and like fucking pitchers and baseball throwing bullpens, which is just basically them warming it. Like nothing about it's productive. Like I feel like some, most people are like watching like the DNN or whatever the fuck, the Democratic News uh, Republic of the world. I don't know. <clears throat> Do you guys like being informed or like just... I think I'm... It's tough like for comedy shows when I try to like... I follow somebody who's like tackling some legitimate issue and then I'm just like... I fart in the shower, and they're just like, oh, God, this kid. <laughs> People just tackling, like, you know, Biden versus Trump supporters, uh, you know, because the underlying thing with the, um, you know, whole uh, issue of uh, none. And I'm just like, I put a finger in a girl's butt, and it was a chicken finger, and they're just like, God damn it. Bring back the kid who was actually provocative and made us think about the world. I'm right below. If there, here's the here's the surface level, and everybody's talking about important shit up here. I'm just that little fucking fish that's just right below the surface, being like, "Ee, boners." <clears throat> I think that's all. It, I don't know. Whatever. I just have more important shit to worry about. I know that sounds like some white privilegey. I had a girl once say this on a date. She was asking me about voting, and at the time, I didn't vote. All right? Suck my fucking dick. Okay? You gotta do that. I was like, bitch, I live in California. Like, it doesn't matter. I can fucking... You know who's gonna win here. Calm the fuck down. He doesn't... This girl goes, uh, it's because you are you have white privilege, and uh, the things you're... It, it doesn't... Nothing affects you, and I'm just like, shut your dumb fucking mouth with your easy ass these are the people that like they 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 ride others for their decision if you guys didn't hear that hammering too i apologize i don't know what the fuck there's always somebody hammering in my building always something some pipe yeah it's not working i tried hammering it and it's not uh i gotta get some other stuff um uh, these fucking people that's what's so annoying about politics. I'm not going to like get into it. This is a very surface level politics thing I'm about to go into. It has nothing to do with like – don't worry. Like if you don't know shit about politics because I don't and I'm just going to talk about it like somebody watching it. But like just people like that where she's like – it's so easy for them. Like they vote and they act like they fucking did like goddamn uh, God's work and they're like, you know, the things you're voting for, uh, you should because I know it doesn't affect you. And you're like, you're the person who like will post a paragraph on Facebook about like some issue that's happening. Like the pipelines are bleh. You're like, but you don't do anything beyond that. Just because you did this for 45 seconds, you act like you fucking you're out there with a picket. Go fuck yourself. 
that's frustrating when you do more than those people, but because they did like the things that are like on the internet and are, can be like proof. I did that. When they do, do you're like, well, I volunteer way more than you do, but yeah, tell me more about how I don't do shit for people. Anyways, that's what gets me frustrated. And it's shitty because <clears throat> you ever get, I just don't know enough about certain things to where I can confidently argue. I can feel what I want to say, but I don't know the words that I want to say. Isn't that wild that words started based on feelings? We felt a thing and then go, look, and then like, what was that? I don't know. I just looked at that and I thought, look, and then that's how a word started. That's insane. I'm very primitive. We're like, I just don't like with politics and the terms and all the stuff. You're like, I can feel what I want to say and I'm, <laughs> but I don't know what to say to you. So I'm not going to say it, but I will be at home and angry on my podcast about it. Yeah, I don't know. Fucking all this shit. White privilege is a tough thing to talk about because if you hit if you hit it from the wrong angle, it gets a little squirrely. But no, I agree. I think that is a thing. I think one hundred percent that's a thing. I've you know, I think from a this is like from a person from New England who is surrounded by white people. It's you're blinded by it because you're just around white people, and also you see other white people with better white privilege so in turn you don't feel like you have any when they have better white privilege does that make sense and then you go out into the world and you're like i don't have it that guy has it like no bitch you have it too it's your just isn't as good as theirs there's like levels to everything everything's a gradient that's what i'm learning in life it's not cut and dry unless it's my fucking I was going to make a piss your pants joke and this just didn't work. Anyways, but that's what I'm saying. You can't have white privilege. You you have it. That's that's like pe- people who are white. We all have it. It's just we're seeing other people with better versions of it. So we don't think we have it. But it's still, you know, I have enough friends of color that I chat with. And I said that because black, Indian, anything where... It gives uh, authoritative figures or anybody in power some they you just look different than a white person. You they are treated different, and it's true. And I know if you're not like w- with them, people are like, "Well, I don't know. I didn't ever see it." Said, well, you're not them, so that's why you don't see it. You dumb fuck. But people have it. So, but come back to me. It's like you know, one I believe in it, but you know, we couldn't. I definitely had it growing up, but it's shitty when you can't even enjoy it at the level you want. So in turn, you don't... Like my stepdad, I watched him sink two boats. I couldn't even enjoy it. Like we had it for a second, and then he ruined it. Yeah, you had a boat. Well, I also had to get off that boat onto a dinghy, which in turn is like a small... Like, you know, it's still a boat, but I'm like, you know. When your boat's getting towed by another better boat, that's like, you know, it's not, there's no white privilege about that. I don't know. That's just my, that's where my brain stops with that thought. I would, I would try to like, uh, you know, think out loud with that, but I don't know, you know, white privilege, me being in a mosh pit and I fall and the band thought I got hurt and stopped playing. Is that white privilege or is it just them being considerate? Eh, for the sake of my joke, maybe we'll say white privilege, guys. That's just funnier, but I don't know, people, all this polit- political fucking, that's like, that's the extent of me trying to like even dip my toe into like the main swirl of like debate issues where I can be like, mm, this is my take on that. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. You're like, okay, I'll go back to, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm scared to do it. I am scared to talk about very like serious topics because I feel like it's so easy to be perceived as like an awful person that you're like, I'm doing it. I always, any group I could talk about, I do care about, but I'm also like, I'm, it, I do it like my friends. If I joke about you, it's because I like you. That's how it works. And I think with all that comedy stuff, <clears throat> like, I'll be honest, that white privilege joke, I'm trying to work on stage. I have a trans joke, I'm trying to work out. What else? 
talk about gay people. Like, dude, you're like I I look at it like how you're brought up in New England, where you bust balls, and if you're busting balls, there's a underlying love there that people need to realize. And I think when they hear things on the internet, they're just like, Jesus Christ, oh my God, he said that word. And you're like, no, I don't. I'm fucking. I'm kidding. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I have a premise for a joke about trans people. I think silly. I support everything they do. I fucking, like I said earlier, wear what you want. Life's too short to fucking, you know. Life's too short to be in a fucking outfit you don't like. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you want. Nothing about you wearing that over there affects me eating this over here. That's how I look at shit. And that's how, stop, people are like this. (gasps) Fucking eat your food. Who gives a shit? That guy's... Guy, girl, he, it, they, them. Let them be fucking happy. Who gives a fuck? But with that being said, I like you so much. I'm going to pick on you in a friendly way because it's going to make you realize. And then if people realize when I pick on a topic afterwards, if they were there in real life, I would put my arm around them and be like, you know, I'm kidding, right? And they'd be like, yes. And then we'd go have a beer and fucking laugh about it. It's because when you can't have, you don't have the opportunity in comedy to grab that group and put your arm around them and be like, you fucking freak. <laughs> Like, I'm just kidding. You know that. I support you. It's like when your uncle fucking picks on you a whole birthday party and then at the end does the thing with your hair and it just, com- him fucking up your hair just eliminated any roast, any thing he did fucked up towards you, any older cousin shitting on you. Anytime they scratch the top of your head, you're just like, all right. He was kidding. Thank God. But, uh. I have a trans joke, like one I was generally, this is me just saying out loud, people, this is a topic. You might hear it on stage if you ever see me one day, but like with when a dude's transitions, what does he do with his clothes? I'm always curious. Where do you put your clothes? Because I need new clothes and you have clothes you arguably not going to wear again. Maybe you are, but that's just, a, see, like that's something where I feel like you can't get mad at me. I'm just being a silly little bitch. And I need new jeans because my jeans have holes in the fucking crotch for some goddamn reason. And you know what? <clears throat> if you have jeans, you have some clothes that you're trying to get off your hands, I'll take them because I think that's a, that's a good exchange program. That's like a nice exchange like, all right, dudes, I'm, I'm dipping out of this gender, but uh, as a farewell gift, here are my clothes. I hope they serve you well. <laughs> I want you to take these. Really? I mean, I'm getting out of here. It's kind of like when your coworker goes out of fucking. This is like when your coworker quits or gets fired. What happens the next day? You just start fucking rummaging around their desk like you don't need this anymore. It's the same thing. It's not like a. It's just like I'm, I need your shit. You had that this whole time. I didn't know. Well, you don't need it anymore. So fucking. It's like fucking Willy Wonka. That should be like a scene where fucking some transgender dude goes. And has a bunch of straight dudes walking into his closet, and he's like, what's that Willy Wonka song? The candy man can, because he mixes it with love. It's me putting out a shirt. It's like, and he's like, (laughs) you can have it. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's silly. Now, am I, like, am I attacking rights? I don't give a fuck. Anybody can do anything in my world. If you're in my world... Maddie's world sounds like Wayne's world. If you're in Maddie's world, bro, do whatever you want. Just don't be a psycho. Don't kill people. Don't fucking, you know, like, let's take the rules of society of like being mean and just be like, just don't do this. If you have a motorcycle, put in fucking AirPods and play the goddamn music. In Maddie's world, rule number one motorcycles and loud equipment does not need a radio on it. That's rule number one. Rule number two, if you're going to transition, you get a big banger party, but at some point in that party, we're giving your clothes to more needy dudes. That's rule number two. Rule number three, if you have an apartment building, you can't just hammer pipes all day without announcing. I feel like the person down there doesn't even know what the fuck they're doing. That's genuinely it. I feel like they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they're doing the shit little kids do when you think you're fixing something. You just hit it with a hammer because you saw that on TV. <clears throat> so, I don't know how people do podcasts for an hour. This is a half hour, and I feel like you guys are already, like, got a fucking... 
me on mute and you're just watching something on your phone right now. My attention span is just too... What's other some topics that are fucking scary to chat about? I don't know. My stepdad did sink two boats. It's pretty funny. One of which they didn't. Okay, let me. Uh, I'll lift the veil of comedy. They didn't sink, but they were taking on water to the point where we had to get towed in on one occasion, and on the other occasion we were leaving to go out, and it was taking on water, and it was like a sandbar, and we kind of just like. <laughs> And then, like, there was water in it, and my stepbrother was crying, and it's funny. My sister, to this day, I think is the funniest thing. She, he was crying. We're in, like, the sandbar, which, uh, when you're in the ocean, it's just, like, a shallow body of water. The sand's, like, it's, like, two feet deep, literally. Like, some boats, you have to raise your motor so you can get through it because otherwise you run amok. But in the process of, you know... Taking on water, our engine stuck. We basically got, we ran amok on the sandbar. And I remember my sister, stepbrother was like crying. We're not even out of the port. There's like boats parked like right there and all around us. And we're kind of doing through the channel. And he was like crying. And my sister would literally lean over. She goes, you can literally just get up and walk out. <laughs> I think about that every fucking day. When I think about that idea, I think about my sisters being like, you literally can just walk out. And then, like, and then like cut to, like if this was a TV show, it would pan down and you just see the bottom like it's a puddle and you're just like, what are you crying for? What the fuck? Uh, that was a funny idea. <clears throat> yeah, guys, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Maybe I'll dig into some more edgy topics. I don't know. I should care more about that. I feel like, uh, you know what's funny? The thing I was going to say, remember the thing a long time ago before the motor motorcycle drove away or started driving by is I was going to say how we're so, we love watching people be mean to each other, which is weird. It's like a weird thing that it's like good for entertainment and I'll give examples, but it's good for like entertainment, but like that can't be good for us. Is it, is it not me or like ever since like reality shows where there's a judge and somebody seeking their approval and the judge is mean or reality shows where there's people in a house and they're, yeah, get angry. Ever since then, <clears throat> I feel like just the tension of this country is just getting fucking like, all we do all day is watch people getting yelled at or yelling at other people. That's all we watch all fucking day from reality shows, whatever the fuck Kim Kardashian housewives. It's just, let's be honest. You're not watching it for them to get along. You're watching it for them to be drunk at dinner, being like, you fucking fuck. And just screaming at each other. You like that part. You like the parts of cooking shows where the judge is like, this tastes like shit. I'm going to murder your family. You suck. Quit now. Like you like that part. Maybe you like the little scenes of them dicing in slow motion or fucking maybe the occasional redemption of this is pretty good your last one though tasted like my asshole and i've heard what it tastes like you suck fucking just the news uh, like don't even start at the fucking news he's vulnerable of course it is of course Thank you, uh, and then you get you get all the fucking guys who bar people who barely got through fucking high school all worked up on social media. Hey, this uh, uh, voter fraud. I give, here's my site. Why don't you cite some sources in high school so you wouldn't be fucking up your dumb fucking job now? Sorry, that was rude because people maybe have a shitty job and you took offense to that. But what I'm getting at is it's just these. It's triggering attitudes and people. Now you got these little mini anger pods from your show running around regurgitating the shit. That's all we are. We're just like reflections of what show we watch amongst the world. You watch Kim K and all those reality shows. You're a girl that likes to stir the pot. That's what it is amongst your friend circle. Sarah, you suck. I'm just saying it. I'm just getting out of my chest thinking there's a camera on you and you're going to do an interview in a second. Sarah needs to know that she fucking sucks 
and I'm not going to hold it in anymore. Guess what? Those interviews don't happen in real life. Nobody's watching you. Maybe you don't be a bitch. That's one. Two, me with cooking shows. I watch cooking, so many goddamn cooking shows where people are like, ugh, little under seasoned, kind of soggy. This tastes like shit. Your mother's fat. Like, that's all I hear all day. So whenever I eat food, my first thought is to fucking, my first thought is to literally just critique it. I can't enjoy food I make anymore or eat. Every now and then, if I'm like fucked up or it's like fast food, I don't really critique fast food. If I'm at a restaurant, a little salty. They're like, Matt, shut the fuck up. No one cares that you watch Top Chef. You're not a chef. You're not anything. Shut the fuck up. At this point, if you haven't hit the fucking nail on the head, just stop. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm talking about the thing downstairs. Um, Political shit. Like, did you ever just watch the news and you go to social media and you just see people do saying what they're saying? You're like, what the fuck? Like, you're you don't even know what you're saying. You're just copy and pasting. You're plagiarizing in real life the way you did in high school. You fucking low life, and you don't even know what you're talking about. You're doing half the people, and I'm just gonna say this. Actually, this goes for fucking both parties. I feel like it's weird when I watch like you know building up to the election, just like. Biden, Trump, who they are as people aside, if you look at their names, their way they're projected on stickers as like a logo, people were toting that around like it's a logo and it reassures who they are as a person. For example, like some people back home, like they'll be like, they'll put up like the Trump thing and I'm like, you don't even know what the fuck he talks about. You just know it reaffirms that you're some like backwoods fucking. She think my tractor's dicky. Like, it's just reaffirming this image you're trying to do, but you don't even know what the thing means that you just put on your body. And same thing with people in LA with like Biden, but yeah, you're like, you're just doing it because it makes you fucking. You're too scared to like say what's on your mind around people, and you put this like sticker that's just like everybody I love everybody like you don't even know what the fuck that is you're just doing it to and that loops all this is a very clothing driven episode that just loops back to the people spit dude what the fuck is this episode just not like a, in a, a vortex of the same thing me just saying it 90 different ways I started with a spit and I'm gonna end with one and this is a good clothing thought clothing thought oh my god dude it's like there like a, I feel like there's like a comedy god just like puppeting me right now. Let's make him say ninety things. Spit. Uh, do what you fucking want. All these fucking people judge me nuts. Stop doing shit. That's them. That's the equivalent. All these stickers and political and things you're regurgitating because you saw it somewhere else because you want attention. That's the same as wearing that flashy dumb outfit, right? Is that not this fucking same where you're like, what are you lacking in yourself where you need to just wear this like fucking zebra ass shiny look at me shell just to provoke other people to interact with you? That's all it is. That's all fucking everything is now and that's why it's frustrating to really sift through who really gives a shit about what they're talking about versus who's saying it just to get a rise out of people because essentially they have nothing else to talk about otherwise. And I think... Those people wouldn't, you know, that's why I just talk about boogers, buttholes, titties, areolas, fucking farting, sinking boats. Like, that's me. I'm not going to put on this shell and try to even discuss topics that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about because then you come off as fake. It's, everybody can tell. I wear boat shoes. I wish I'd disappear. And, uh, you know, Sometimes throughout the day, I have to go wipe my butt because I didn't do it good the first time. People, thank you for watching my podcast. Um, I spit twice, came once, and you know what? I'm proud of this episode. I think it's pretty good. So happy Friday. Have a good weekend. Uh, get drunk. DM me. I don't give a fuck. Let's just get weird. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, bye. Bye.